Well, joining me now to discuss this is Alex Dean, Head of Public Affairs at Weber Shandwick and also former Chief of Staff to David Cameron. We're also joined tonight by American journalist Beth Gardner. It's a pleasure to have you both on the programme. Um, Alex, you, of course, you know them both well. Do you think Samantha Cameron really influences the Prime Minister's decision making? It would be false to pretend that anyone that you love and you're close to has no effect on your decision making. But I kind of hate these stories about you know, trying to dig behind people's relationships, relationships that are already pretty hard by dint of the job that you do. And I, I don't think that um, Samantha Cameron will influence our Prime Minister any more than any other spouse of, of a Prime Minister uh, ever has. Now, it's right, of course, that people like Dennis Thatcher, uh, Norma Major were quite um, backroom in what they did. But she, t the sum total of what Samantha Cameron has done in the public eye is to be an ambassador for uh, Save the Children. I mean, I don't really think that's the same sort of activism that you see with a formal role like a First Lady. But she does a great job at Save the Children, of course. Yeah. She was very moved by her trip to Syria, it was very obvious. Mm -hmm. And of course, she's a great ambassador when it comes to fashion, the fashion industry in this country. So yeah, that's true. Fair enough. Maybe he should listen to her. What do you think, Beth? Gardner? Well, I, I agree with Alex, actually. I mean, obviously, it's important um, in policymaking to respect the, the proper channels and in, in, include the experts in decision making and that sort of thing. Uh, I would assume that that's being done in, in Downing Street and the Foreign Office when it comes mm. to an issue like Syria. Um, but I think uh, voters, I would imagine, would be surprised to think that a, a political spouse wasn't um, sure. having some influence uh, on, on their spouse, you know. Samantha Cameron is a is a closest confident, intelligent, exactly. educated, accomplished woman. And when you're talking about an issue like Syria, that is such a, a heartrending humanitarian a issue, and a, and a, and a, for a mother, um, all of that and is a, true. An issue of of sort of war and peace and life and death. You'd you'd be puzzled if they weren't talking about it over the dinner table. Right. But all all of that is true. But I think this is the a kind mm -hmm. of the worst example of where she might actually be, be influencing mm -hmm. um, our Prime Minister because we set up this whole new uh, apparatus to deal with um, questions specifically like this. So we've got a National Security Council where these things are exhaustively thrashed through mm -hmm. in a way that they weren't um, so much in the past because of the outcomes of Iraq and, and so forth. I'm not making a part of the political point. I just mean that the decision making is much more formalised now uh, before we take activity like that. So the sum total of this, all this speculation is a source for the Times, an anonymous minister who won't go on the record, saying he thinks that the cause for Cameron's hawkish position is Samantha Cameron. Well, I haven't talked to him about it, but I think the reason for his hawkish position is that more than 100,000 yeah. people have died in Syria. But, but she is seen to be an asset when it comes to the election campaign, Huge isn't she? Asset. So too was Sarah Brown and Gordon Brown. So, yeah. you know, and look, look what happens in the United States. I mean, Michelle Obama is a great asset to the, yeah. to the president, isn't she? She certainly is. It's always a very delicate balancing act for a political spouse, and I think that's as true in, in the U.S even with the more formalized role that the First Lady has, as it is here. Um, Michelle Obama, um, you know, certainly plays a role in political campaigns. She, uh, she takes on issues, but she is very careful, like most That's First Ladies before her, to take on issues that are needs. not particularly controversial. Her main issues now are um, fighting against childhood obesity and supporting military families. You know, she's like well, Sam Cam is a very is a very smart, very educated woman, and you'd be surprised if she wasn't discussing you know some pretty important things with her husband that over transition happened, of course, over with dinner. Hillary too, who was much yeah. more active in the first term. And had well, that was where you saw the the balancing act go a little bit askew, and Hillary Clinton is in retrospect seen as the classic example of sort of having pushed it too far. But she could election. come back as president one day, which well, is the irony. Well, that would really turn it upside down. Um, we've yeah. had a, a Facebook uh, tweet, or Facebook comment, mm -hmm. I should say. Yeah, this is for you, actually. It's from Stephen Thomas, and it says, it's not a wife's job to influence decisions when it comes to making politics. They need to remember that she is his wife and not one of his cabinet. So what That's do you think... Well, yes. Stephen, I would say, first of all, you <laughs> presumably mean wives or husbands, and we've had a female prime minister, and we may yet have a female president. Uh, and uh, wouldn't that be good too?